Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to Bringing the Zoo to You. I'm Maggie, one of your animal care specialists here at Wild Encounters, and I'm joined today by Francine and Jen, also animal care specialists. We want to wish everybody a National Zookeeper Week to start out, and today we have two of our amazing animal ambassadors with us today, Tallulah and Peterson, two of our uh, Tamanduas, or lesser anteaters. And today we're going to be talking to you about the care that we provide for them here at the zoo. These are two of our probably favorite animals to take care of in our department. They require a lot of specialized care and they are just really fun to take out for programs and care for here at the zoo. So Jen here has Peterson up on the tree and you can see him climbing around. They're really specialized animals being that they're arboreal or semi-arboreal. So they spend a lot of their time up in the treetops. So you can check out his really big claws um, and his prehensile tail. So he's got a tail that can wrap around branches. So when we care for these guys, we've got to make their habitat specialized so that it provides all the type of things for them to live happily. So in their habitat, they've got lots of branching, um, high up perching, and they've got lots of hollowed out logs for them to sleep in. These two love to snuggle together tightly. Um, so they've got a couple little pod um, type hollowed out logs so they can uh, live in that. In the wild, they would live out in uh, hollowed out logs that uh, other animals may have uh, dug out but that's where they would sleep during the day because they are a nocturnal species. So they would normally be awake um, <laughs> at night, but these two love to uh, wake up during the day because they're kind of on zoo time. It's when they like to get up and get their snacks. So when we are preparing their homes, we make sure to make it as naturalistic as possible. So right now you're checking out Tallulah. She's down on the ground because they do spend time foraging on the ground also. So she was checking out one of her naturalistic enrichment items. So providing enrichment for these animals. So providing them things to do, something different every day, mimicking things they would find naturally in their environment. So these guys are from South America. Um, providing them enrichment is really exciting for these animals. It's really fun. It gets us thinking on our feet. Um, so we've got these kind of fake logs here with holes in them because tamanduas have really long tongues. So if you check out, we threw some bugs inside of here. So that gets these guys to use their 12 inch long tongue. And they're gonna stick that inside those holes and slurp up their favorite bugs. So in the wild, they eat things like termites and maybe some other types of bugs that they find. And they can, or ants, of course, because they're ant eaters. Um, they're gonna eat thousands of ants every single day. They specialize in termites that live up in trees. So that's something that they would find. Now taking these guys outside on walks, they can also find ant mounds out here in the wild. So we take them on walks throughout the zoo and they find ants, cover themselves in ants. So that's really enriching. That's one of our favorite things to do um, when we do do chats or just taking them on enrichment walks. They really love to find um, ant mounds. <laughs> so you can see Tallulah's tongue sticking out. Francine's giving her some of her favorite mealworms. Now their tongue is also specialized. They've got really sticky spit and that acts as a glue. So when they find an ant mound or a termite mound, they put their tongue down in there and that glue sticks to all the bugs because they can't really use their hands to grab the bugs and put them in their mouths. So that glue um, adheres to all the insects that they're eating and helps them slurp it up. So she doesn't have any teeth when she eats either. Some other really cool facts about how they consume their food. So she grabs all that, all those bugs with her tongue and her sticky spit, but her mouth only opens to the size of a pencil eraser. So it's super small opening and they don't have any teeth to chew up all of that food, but they do have a gizzard. So that grinds up all of that food that they're eating. You can check out both of them side by side. Now people might wonder how we tell the two of these apart. So Tallulah is on the right and Peterson here is on the left. They look very similar, but it's really important for zookeepers to be able to tell their animals apart. Um, we spend our time with these animals every day, so we know them very well. But Tallulah is a little bit lighter in color. Peterson's slightly darker. She has more fur on the base of her tail and he has kind of more of a naked tail. And she has, he has a pointed vest. These are um, vested tamanduas, southern tamanduas, so they have a black vest 
on their body, his vest goes to a V where she has a uh, white line down her back. Ah. There's lots of different ways that we identify our animals. Sometimes it's completely visual. Some animals you have to put bands on them to be able to tell them apart, but we can tell these two apart visually. So to get to this point with taking them out for programs and they're such wonderful animals, it's taken a lot of training. Training is a really important part of the daily care that our animal care specialists provide to all of our animals. So we do training for programs, just standing here and providing them reinforcement for um, being good on the tree is really important. Uh, we do husbandry uh, training with all of the animals. So that's them participating voluntarily in their daily care. So you'll notice as we talked about before, they have really sharp claws. So we do nail trims with them. So we'll offer them bugs, um, we'll trim their nails, even just getting up close to them and being able to look at the pads of their feet. Um, they allow us to pick up their feet, look at them, check for anything wrong. If they have an injury, we can check out their bellies. Tulula has gotten ultrasounds before, voluntary ultrasounds. Um, she's never had a baby yet, but we do check for those things. So it's really important that she does all those things voluntarily. Mm -hmm. how, how long do you train your animals every day? Um, you know, they can have training sessions for maybe just five minutes. They can have training sessions for 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. If we take them on a long walk, they can be out for 30 minutes. So it really depends on what we're trying to accomplish. But, you know, doing these things daily, interacting with them daily, it's, it's all really important part of their lives. Okay. What else do they like to eat? What else do they like to eat? That's a good question. So obviously, um, bugs are their primary source of food. They get a kind of mixed, we call it like a slurry, a protein milkshake, um, but that is ground up insectivore pellet. So that is their primary source of food here at the zoo. But then in the wild, they would also maybe eat uh, rotten fruit that falls on the ground. Um, here at the zoo, we give them avocado, baby food they really like. So those are all things that are enrichment items that we give them. Um, they might get a whole fruit piece and they can kind of rip it apart with their claws, big chunk of cantaloupe or something like that. Um, they really enjoy that. <laughs> Peterson right now is scent marking the tree. <laughs> Though you all at home cannot enjoy um, their, their odor, they are one of the smelliest animals at the zoo. They smell like a skunk and uh, it's, it's very evident. It's quite pungent right now. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Every time I walk into the building, I'm like, hmm, did I forget to put on deodorant today? <laughs> oh no, it's just the Timmy and Jonas. <laughs> they, you know where they are. If you, whenever Hamill um, opens back up, they are, they are known in the building. <laughs> so they do, they do have um, those really long claws and they walk kind of on their knuckles. Mm -hmm. uh, so that we've so, learned so that they don't puncture their, their, correct. their, the pads on their uh, feet. Yeah, yep. thank you. Their pads. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't think of the word. So when they climb, um, <laughs> <laughs> hopefully don't slip. Right? I did notice uh, Peterson when he was up here. He still had. He was kind of still on his knuckles. But do they use those in the same way, kind of like a sloth would? They can't. They don't necessarily just hang. Well, they like don't a sloth hang, but. Would. Um, but they do wrap them around okay. branches for climbing. They would more than likely dig them into the bark to really help um, grab and climb up onto the branches of a tree. Um, whereas sloths, you know, hook them like a clothes hanger and just hang from them. Um, they do use them in similar ways, um, but they're more for ripping things open. Okay. Grabbing onto branches really deep. <laughs> Did you like how long that question yeah, was? Yeah, I know. What the heck, I couldn't spit the words out. <laughs> and we can see their a little bit of the yeah the you can see their differences too. too and their 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 vests as i was describing before so he has a really pointed v on his back and hers is a white stripe yeah, they're very pretty and their tails are really good at gripping so they're holding on to this branch so that allows them to hold on to a branch and reach really far without completely getting off the area that they're sitting on if they're reaching for some food um so it's a really really great adaptation for them and how old are they how old are they? They are, I think, 11. I think so. 11, maybe yeah. Tallulah's around 11. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. So in captivity here at the zoo, they can uh, live into their late teens. 
in the wild, probably somewhere around 11 would be their lifespan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And are they nocturnal? They are nocturnal. But as I mentioned before, they're usually on zoo time here. So they were napping, but they love waking up to hang out with their favorite zookeepers and get all the bugs that they love. Mm -hmm. Do they spend most of their time in the trees? They do spend a lot of time in the trees, yep. They find a lot of their food source up in the trees, but they climb down to the ground to forage for other things. So it's, it's a combination of both. So Tallulah just dropped down, but she caught herself with that tail and those back feet. So they're incredibly skilled at um, using all their body parts to help them maneuver around in the trees. <laughs> they just... You want to make their keepers work today. Yes. In yeah, appreci yeah, appreciation of them. <laughs> there all you right. go. It's right down. All right. Well, thank you all so much for tuning in um, and spending time with our zookeepers and our tamanduas. And make sure if you're here at the zoo and you run into an animal care specialist to please wish them a happy National Zookeeper Week. And thank you all so much for tuning in. Have a great day.